This video is supported by EmuDB, the lightweight, high-speed immutable database for systems and applications. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And if you are a mainframe enthusiast like me, then you may have run across some of this truly great videos that uh, this person called Matt Wilson has put on YouTube over the last year or so. And I'm referring here to the SysGen videos where he does a complete SysGen of MVS 3.8 and installs all the relevant patches and installs all the subsystems and and TSO and JS2 and the monitoring system, etc., etc. And I've uh, I've admired Matt Wilson because I've done several many SysGens in over the last uh, years. But it's a, it's a tedious process then, uh, and I thought of a couple of times about making videos about a sysgen, but then it's just such a, a tedious thing, and uh, I just never did it. <laughs> I was too lazy. Uh, but Matt is certainly not a lazy person at all, by any stretch of the imagination. And he went and made this amazing uh, videos about how to sysgen an MVS 3.8 from scratch, uh, all the way to a functioning working system with compilers and everything. So I admired uh, Matt for all this uh, stuff. He's also he's also done some very interesting videos on VMS, Open VMS, um, Open VMS. Matt Matthew. Let's see if we can find them. Uh, here we are. Those are great videos as well. I would say that he uh, he has a far superior video. Uh, making quality than me is uh, is very very good at it. So uh, so thank you, Matt, if you're listening. And and so I've always admired him. And then recently I saw it on our Discord channel, and I will put the link to the Discord channel where you find hundreds of mainframe and and uh, and related topic enthusiasts in lively discussions. Sometimes <clears throat> um, you'll see that uh, he also has. I found out that he has this GitHub channel, sorry, uh, uh, GitHub repository system, number of GitHub repositories, and I saw this one. And as you may know, I, I like Go very much. I do a number of things with Go. I may not be uh, the, the programmer who uses all the most advanced features of Go, and I'm not uh, great at object-oriented programming much more of a procedural programmer myself because that's that's uh, how I learned to program but uh, I saw this repository and that really intrigued me and what it says here is go 3270 server library this library allows you to write go servers for 3270 emulators um, clients by building the 3270 data streams from fields and processing the client response to receive the attention keys and field values entered by users so basically, you could write 3270 applications in Go, and you don't need you don't even need a mainframe at all. You don't need MVS. You don't need uh, VM. You don't need ZOS. You can just write it in Go, and then you can use any normal uh, 3270 emulator and you connect to it. And what it did is it went and learned about 32 data streams from this amazing person, Tim Sprinkle, and maybe we'll. Uh, open a new tab there. So Tommy Sprinkle is well known in the mainframer community. He knows a lot about mainframes and he uh, documents things very nicely. So he writes here, for instance, what all the codes mean and also um, what the data streams are for um, for the 3270 encoding. And, and so he went there, looked at all that and at the end of the day, it's all just Telnet, right? So he created this library, this repository that allows one to write these applications. And so um, I have immediately went and got this repository and started writing stuff. And 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 then, so there's, this is the beginning of the story. But I'm going to get slowly to where I really want to get, which is he used all that to do something which I've been actually thinking of doing myself for a few years now, which is writing a proxy server in 3270 so that you connect only to one IP address, one port, and from there you can connect to all your mainframes wherever they are in the world. 
and he did that but before he could do that he needed to write this 3270 server library and then I had many discussions with Matt and how to implement the proxy and he wrote it and I made some suggestions and uh, some modifications myself and now it's all working actually already quite nicely I'm sure there's going to be more extensions to it but it, it's working nicely and I'm going to give you an example of that so this, for instance, uh, is a connection that we have to actually to a Go uh, program, right? This is not the mainframe at all, but I'm using here my Vista 3270 emulator, which is the best 3270 emulator out there if you're running Windows. And if you're running Linux, then obviously X3270. So you can see here, I am writing, um, I'm, I'm typing and I can press F3 and then I exit and all this is running on Linux and you can see every time I press something something happens that's just the, the tracing that's enabled right now and I can see exactly on which field what what was pressed and what's going on and um, so you can write full applications and now I disconnect it by pressing F3 and now we can go there and look at this code so obviously this is from Matt Racing Mar Mars, and I will put the script, the link to his repositories in the description below this video, so you can find them. Here it is again. So he allows you to define in a very simple manner uh, 32 panels, and how you do it, you tell him ro the row where you want to put it, the column. Obviously, you know if you're working with 24 rows, then you have up to 22, up to 24 and you tell him exactly where to put it in and then um, if it's intense or not and you put in whatever you want to put in there you can also put in variables if you define them as variables and then you build your panels like this and here's a different panel and then you have the main function which accepts the the telnet connection with your 3270 emulator here in this case on port 16000 whatever you want to do it it could have, of course later on it could be a parameter and then it starts and whenever a connection comes in it goes to handle it handles the connection here as you can see and here's the function handle so um, it negotiates a tenant connection which is compatible with 3270 and then it will just loop forever in handling of the panel so uh, first we show the first panel your show screen which is the screen that I just showed you before this one okay screen one so have your basically just it could be anything right and, and so in here and here we we show uh, screen one and then we wait for the user to press uh, some keys which we can define we want attention keys here uh, which are the PF keys PA1, PA2, PA3 etc um, and um, and then if the user uh, didn't press uh, anything other than telnet then it just goes back to the loop otherwise we'll start processing that and we look at uh, what the user pressed and then we could uh, then depending on what the user if the user pressed enter then it goes to screen number two which we define also up here right so this is a different panel so screen is a panel and you can write your own interactive applications very easily so you don't even need uh, kicks anymore if you need to use 3270 because you know you want to maybe extend the capabilities of your MVS system or VM system, you can very easily add stuff here. So um, I started to play with that a little bit and I wrote here another one called, let's see what I did here. No, it's basically the same thing again. So two names for the same thing. Change the port to 16,000 and go run tm3270 you need a recently you know a reasonably recent go 
to compile that. So 115, I think, 113, 115. Let's connect here again. Yeah. And so you can see, if I press enter, I go to the second panel. Oh, no host. So I would select one here. Okay, so here I'm trying to build. You can see that early on when I saw this repository, I wanted to build a kind of a ZTAM, which means <laughs> like a VTAM has the capability to connect you to other hosts, right? And, and so I wanted to do that without having to go through the mess of configuring VTAM. And so when I saw this, repository I, I contacted Matt on Discord and told him what if we were using this to build a a um, connection forwarding system um, so and and, and and he said well why and I said because let's say that you're running a machine somewhere on the internet and you want to run an MVS system there a VM system maybe you have um, um, you know, maybe you have Linux or something also running there, or if you have ZPDT like I do, then I have, you know, 10, 12 different mainframe uh, systems running on the ZVM. And I want to connect to, I, and I want to make those accessible to me from outside, from, from anywhere, from the internet, but I don't want to expose all the ports. I want to block all the uh, 3270 ports so that I don't have to log and check the logs of every single uh, mainframe to see who's trying to connect and block the bad guys. If I only had to expose one port on that one IP and then from there internally I would just connect internally to all these IPs then I would only have to check one log and I could uh, configure the firewall only for that one proxying system. So he liked the idea and and he went out there and he wrote that for me Oh, I, have, I guess for everybody because it's open source and I'll show it to you it's called proxy 3270 which of course is using the same library to to build the panels but as he says here proxy 3270 allows a user to open a 3270 session to the server and choose from a list of other 3270 servers or mainframes to connect to this allows you to have several services in your network and provide one access point the 32 uh, proxy 3270 service this should be considered a proof of concept prototype at this stage. I have some plans for the future, but at the moment the service is very simple. It's statically configured from a JSON configuration file. It will allow you, the user, to choose a service to connect to, then disconnect when the remote server session is done. Um, so here it says how to build, some limitations, other nodes. Um, yeah. So this is a, an early, early implementation. Uh, then Moshik suggested the idea originally and it fit in well with something that I wanted to do with this may evolve into. He's not saying what it may evolve into, but I can't wait to find out. And of course, he's using his own Go3270 library for screen control during the menu selection. Um, logging is provided by ZeroLog, which I'm not very fond of. Um, and so, yeah, that's Matt Wilson and uh, copyrighted by him. It's all written by him, and I've, I, it's very simple code. I've made some changes to it, and we're going to look into it now. So let's see how this works. Let's disconnect here. Okay, so we can now make this go away. And let's go to the repository I have here, Proxy3270 which I just cloned half an hour ago. So this is the latest version of the repository. And you just build it with go build. And that's it, and it builds it within seconds. Um, I'm running go 115.6, which is fairly recent. This is the one that comes with uh, Ubuntu 20.04. If you have an older um, version of Red Hat or Linux or whatever, or even Windows, uh, for that matter, then you just can go to Google and download the latest version of Go. That that all works fine. And update, that's very simple. So, um, so let's see now what we got. So this is the code. And a lot of it is concerning with tracing and debugging because there's some subtleties to forwarding 3270 telnet connections, which we learned a lot about in testing and 
uh, maybe I'll show you here the issues well a lot of them are closed but um, you know we had we there's already seven issues closed one open we have a lot of interaction with uh, with Matt to try to get it where it's really useful and now I think it is so uh, a lot of this is error handling and as you can see here there's a part where he builds the screen same thing like we saw before and this is using of course the go3270 library so he's building here a a screen a very simple one where he has several uh, hosts that he can offer the user to connect to and then uh, we, uh, we we call that screen a screen, so we put it on the on the on the screen, and then we handle the input, right? So here is the input that we handle, which is basically the selector for which screen the the user wants to connect to, and then we return the screen and the rules, which is the input to the handling, and and then we forward the connection. So it's actually a very simple thing. Uh, there's a little bit more that goes into screen. Where is it? Um, oh, sorry, into proxy. This is how the proxying is being handled. Okay, so because basically we take one pipe which is coming in from the real user the 3270 emulator and then once he selects a host he wants to connect or she one a host that she wants to connect to then we open another connection and now we have to attach these two pipes together and that's the proxy function so read and feed obviously so we read from one and feed to the other and so um, very beautiful code I have to say I quite like um, the way that Matt is coding this. It's simple, elegant. Um, there's nothing crazy fancy here that will break. So it's very portable, runs on Windows, Linux, doesn't matter really. So now, you know, to, to invoke it, once you build it, you, it's very simple. You just, you, uh, you have a help. You give it a configuration file which is in JSON format, which is one thing I really don't like that much. JSON goes on, you know, I'm, I have no patience for JSON. But uh, if you want to enable debug and what debugging level and where you want to log, which again is something that we will modify later in this video because I don't like the log format that it has, but otherwise that's just that's just me. The port where you want to listen to, the timeout for connections when you're waiting for response from the others system and of course a trace so um, you would invoke it with something like um, config there's a config sample here okay uh, log connections port 16,000 and then we can go here and reconnect um, here as you can see here now we can just choose one and it will forward there or I can choose the ZOS whatever I have I could have here up to about um, 20 or so hosts listed and you can see every time I select something there is a nice logging here with caller that's a zero log that allows to do all that um, and it tells me what and it's trying to forward now to that machine which of course here is not configured because that's just an example um, so uh, now that we have that we can see how this works now let's see how to you know how, how how I use it for my own purpose and why it's important for me for that let's first cancel here let's go here full screen for a second so there are several reasons why this software is so important for me um, 
and that's and why I'm so thankful to Matt Wilson for writing it is that I usually run my MVS and VM370 and um, and other instances in the cloud on a on a on a hosted server, and so I run everything on there so that when I because I travel a lot when I travel. I can access my mainframe instances from everywhere on the planet, even sometimes from my phone, and uh, or th or by creating a hotspot on my phone from my laptop. So I and each mainframe, of course, has its own um, needs to have its own console port. And if I keep them all running at the same time, then I need to monitor all those console ports for attempts by the bad guys to log in and then block those IPs. And so it's just a lot of work to, and it's just insecure to keep that many port, ports open. So for me, the great thing about this is I, I have only one port open now, and I've been running this now for a couple of weeks, and I keep only one port open and everything goes through that connection, and I only have to monitor that port. And whenever, whenever I see an IP that tries two, three times to log in, it, uh, I have scripts that automatically block it. So I have here a configuration file which proxy 3270 will want to accept. Of course it's in JSON format which is a format that I really struggle with. I mean a lot of people they're used to it but for me it's, uh, it's just painful to the eye. But anyway so here's every instance this every stanza here is an instance of a of a machine that proxy can let the user connect to. So we have a ZVM here on my ZPDT, VM3, VM370, uh, another VM370, music, um, and so on, right? You can have, I think, up to 22 or so because of the 24 lines of a mod 2 3270 monitor. So if I start this now and I say Hercules, uh, sorry, <laughs> to use the same Hercules, but uh, proxy, uh, config, Moshix config, port uh, 16,000, and now let's make this a little bit smaller. I reconnect here. You can see now it's not nicely formatted because it's just an example, but I can now um, use this, right? And uh, and uh, and connect to everywhere I want to go. So this makes my environment more secure. And also, you know, I don't have to have 10 different icons on my desktop, each uh, with a script to start a terminal session to a different mainframe. I can now only have one and I click it and I end up uh, and I end up with this uh, screen or something similar. And then from there, I choose where I want to go. It's very, very comfortable. And now VTAM, of course, can do something similar. However, the VTAM that can connect from machine to machine uh, is not the VTAM that we have uh, in VM370, of course, or in MBS 3.8. Those are very old VTAM versions. They don't have this capability. So you would need something like, you know, uh, VM ESA or OS390 or maybe maybe even uh, MVS uh, XA or something like that. But we don't have those and we cannot legally run them. So, um, so this is kind of a, I don't want to say poor man's because it's not really a poor man's. It's it's a very very powerful way to have us present um, a host that we want to connect with and doing it all with 3270. So that's the genius of it, and that's why I like it so much. And as you can see, it has extensive error reporting and everything. No, so now that we've done that, let's disconnect here. PF3. Okay, so you can see we're now out. I kill this and now what I want to say is that um, even though I ask for logging um, from Matt if you look at the the way that the logging is done here uh, I know you, if I want to pipe this into a script it's going to be so much work to filter out all the things that I need because at the end of the day I only need this IP address, right? That's what I'm looking for most of the time. And so um, modern systems, um, that's the one complaint I have, all this modern uh, extensions to Go and Java and all the other stuff. It's it's not really meant to be easily scriptable. I mean, how do you script this? Yeah, you can. I can do this, I can script it. Mm, you know, starting to look from the moment I see an IP address 
uh, number, but they're not lined up, and so that's that's no good, right? So uh, even though I think uh, Matt has uh, had good ideas, and we can keep this running at the same time, but I want to do my own logging, and so what I want to do here is ch go change the program um, so that I can have uh, logging that I can script. Oh, and by the way, I also want to change the map. So changing the map, of course, is very easy. I have here a map that I can... So let's take something like this. I put it aside just for this video. Um, and let's go and change this so that it fits our purposes. Now, I made the fonts here very big because lately some people have been complaining that they can't watch my videos on an, uh, on a phone, on a smartphone. Now, I've said this many times in the past, but maybe I haven't said it in the last year or so. My videos are not meant to be watched on a the phone. The, there's just too much text going on, and then and the devil is in the details that um, I'm just not making this to be to make it uh, easy to view on a, on a phone. You need you know a tablet maybe or best as would, would be on a, on a computer on a laptop or a normal screen because there's just too much text that go, gets lost when you watch it on, on an iPhone and and yeah some people say but I have the iPhone I want to watch the iPhone okay well then you can watch it on the iPhone but uh, the experience is just not going to be there. So um, let's comment this out because I don't like the way that this is presented. I mean, it's just a placeholder. Everybody should go and do their own stuff, obviously, right? And then let's just paste our own... Oh, wait. Uh, let's set paste so we don't mess up the, the formatting. Okay. So, um, as you can see here, it, it's all not fitting in the screen because I'm using very, very large font for the purpose of the video to make some of the people happy. I can't make everybody happy. Anyway, so we create here, I say Moshix Z Connect, um, and I put it at, as you can see here, row zero, column 27, or try to put it in the middle, somehow, so it's centered. And then uh, column two, row two, column two, select which service to connect to. You can put in any text here. And, um, Etc. Now you can also put in colors, right? If I put in here color white, and that's the beauty of the Go3270 library that we're using here. It has color capability, right? And and I can put in some kind of this, you know, people disclaimer, which is especially important for Europeans that your IP has been logged. So we tell them so they don't connect again if they don't want to be logged. And now, so we have now a map that I like better. And let's test it. Um, so we say proxy. Oh, well, first we have to build it, of course. Go build. So let's build it. Go build. Okay, so that was fast. Now we say proxy uh, config. Config uh, port. thousand let's go again to our terminal session here and let's say reconnect yeah as you can see now we have here um, we have this in white we have the disc you know disclaimer we have it looks a little bit better right and there's so there's no limits what you can do you could even probably put in some fancy ASCII graphics in or EPSID graphics in there so this is this is all working okay so now I have it looking the way I want, and let's get out here, and so let's go full screen again. So now the only thing that I don't like so much is the logging, right? The way, the way that the connections log is looks. So I would just want the IP address and nothing else, and certainly don't want with the IP address the port because what I'm going to do with the port that changes every time. I just want to get this thing here who is connecting to me from where. So um, let's look at main go and let's see where we can take out.
Okay, back to normal human speed. I think this is all good. Um, we can let this uh, build. Oh, wait. Uh, okay, a little typo here. Okay, let's try it out. Go build. This went well. So now um, let's start the way we started it before. Okay, without the log option, because we're not going to use the log that Matt put in, we're going to use my own log. And, and then we can also do here, we can see when the first words reconnect. And now we should see IP, uh, yeah, here it is, IP log. So that went well, so let's tail it. And yeah, so now we have the IP without the port, just the IP. It's very easy for me to put this pipe it into a SED script or AUG script or Python. And then from there, um, run an IP tables that uh, takes the ones that repeat more than three or four times that are not my own IP. I can put it in a little whitelist. So very simple to do. Um, but this is much easier to pipe into a script than, than something like this, right? I mean, if you look at... Nothing wrong with that, um, and there's plenty of tools that can read JSON files, but I don't want to have overly verbose read, hard to human read files, um, and then I need to get some other plugin to read the JSON. Uh, it's too much for me. I mean, this is all I need. Uh, IP log, that's all I need here, right? I don't need any more than that. So I don't need to complicate my life uh, too much. So this seems to work and you can see now how easy it is with with this uh, amazing library that matt wrote to not only format pleasant uh, maps um, mainframe 3270 maps but also change them give colors do all kind of things and uh, you could write whole applications and the user would never know it's not really a mainframe they would think um, you know that they wouldn't they wouldn't know that it's go they would think it's some kind of kicks application. So you could make an application look like kicks so um, there's no end to what the library can do for for us as a as a community and i'm quite sure that over time people will start to develop amazing new things and add ideas and other great things that i can't even think of right now so all this to say that um that I really like what uh, what Ray, uh, Matt did here. Again, it's GitHub uh, slash Racing Mars, but I will put a description to this uh, to his 
a GitHub account um, in the description below this video. And the ones that you want to look at are Go3270, which allows you to build these applications, and um, and the other one is Proxy3270. Now, as I, I said at the beginning, all these are still work in progress, so it's going to make it significantly better and easier and more reliable, I'm sure. But um, you know, releasing early and often is one of the open source mantras, and does, that allows us as users to give feedback and to uh, have an influence on the development of what uh, Matt has been doing here. So, uh, bravo, Matt. Thank you very much. Amazing work. And uh, also for all the other videos you have on your channel. And I would urge the community to start playing with this and start to write your own amazing applications. So that's it for today. Um, last day of the year. Thank you very much, all of you, for being such uh, great viewers. We're approaching 6,000 subscribers. We're, I think, only 50 short or so. I'm sure the next few days we'll get there. And so for me personally, a great achievement. It's, uh, it feels great to have such a community around, um, around the mainframe. Uh, just as an additional statistic, 1.7 million viewing minutes of the Moshix mainframe channel in the last 12 months. 1.7 million. Uh, I think 360,000 comments, uh, 400,000 uh, likes or something like that. I don't remember all the numbers, but quite impressive. So thank you very much all and have a, a great day.